Israel has a right to uh, maintain basic law and order. And, yeah, well, no. Okay, I got to say it. Israel has a right to protect its citizens from knife attacks. He's so reticent, so uncomfortable saying that maybe Israel has some some right to to defend itself. That notwithstanding, though, the president just couldn't save himself. No, 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 no. Don't want to come across as too supportive of our alleged ally, Israel. He goes on to, in essence, make a moral equivalence of Israel and the Palestinians. And, you know, they both deserve a little spanking here. Here's part two. We also believe that it's important for both Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israeli elected officials and President Abbas and other uh, people in positions of power to try to tamp down rhetoric that may feed violence or anger or misunderstanding and try to uh, you know, get all people uh, in Israel and in the West Bank uh, to, to recognize that uh, this kind of random violence isn't going to result in anything other than more hardship uh, and more insecurity. Mm. Uh, this president is always psychologizing things. There's never a moral dimension to any of this kind of behavior. No, no, no. It's just frustrations. It's anger. It's feelings of being misunderstood. There's nothing morally right or morally wrong, at least very rarely anyway, in the vernacular of Barack Hussein Obama. And uh, my God, that is just painful. We needed to play that for you. You needed to hear that. But that is just loathsome. That is painful to hear these sitting U.S. presidents so uncomfortable uh, to say there's something right in the world and there's something horribly wrong in the world. And we're distinguishing between the two. Just wanted you to know that. Get to michaelsavage.com. See the news. See what the Palestinians have been doing uh, to uh, to the nation of Israel, having destroyed yet another historical Christian uh, archive, a historical artifact, a historical site relevant to the biblical character. Oh, God forbid I said biblical on radio. The Bible character, Joseph from the New Testament. Think about that. These are serious times, and it requires some critical, serious thinking. Here's our number, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. This is the Savage Nation. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Honored to be sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. He's back on Monday to the phones. Haley is listening to us in Florida. Haley, welcome to the program. Hello. Hey, Austin Hill. Um, Thank you, for one, for your public service. I was just calling in as a millennial um, to touch base with the caller from earlier i and also to show you that there is a pulse on on radio i wanted to bring a point that i don't think actually um it's a generational issue i think it's an age appropriation issue you you guys and my grandparents and parents speak from an industrial age point of view but you've got to realize that we're the first generation with the internet to have all this access more than just a two-party mindset um I, I, I think we kind of are dibbed as rebellious, but I think it's more so passionate. And um, when you look at, you know, say an age, all the things that change, even within the, within the industrial age, uh, machines, um, that also took out people. So that will change the economy. And in the technological age, you're coming on more for that. My personal opinion would be um, when you're entering an age, there should be some kind of government reform, or at least the idea of that. And I don't see that, and um, I'm speaking from a personal point of view in my own observations, but I think that it gets kind of old for our generation. You know, like, we are going to school, and we're getting all this debt tagged on, and there's no answers, you know, and we don't... Oh, no, no. Haley, listen, there is an answer. I don't mean to cut you off, but you're, you're touching on some very profoundly important points, and here's part of the answer. You've kind of sort of been lied to. And I'm really sorry about that. But there is this this lie that has come vis-a-vis public education and from various presidential administrations and state and federal government agencies. This lie has been go to college. You have to go to college, get a degree. Doesn't matter what the degree is in. Just, you know, uh, education is the key. That's the little cliche phrase. Haley, education is the key. Just get a degree. Doesn't matter what it's in. And then there'll be a job waiting for you. You've been lied to. That's part of the problem there. And the fact of 
of the matter is there's some people and and listen I you know I have a graduate degree in uh, philosophy you don't go to monster.com and log on and find all kinds of job openings for uh, people with graduate degrees in philosophy. I, I'm a fairly reasonably well-educated person myself in the liberal arts, no less. And uh, I, I, I feel very good about that. But there was no uh, a direct correlation between studying philosophy and employment as a talk radio host. Your generation has been lied to. Even worse than my Gen X generation was lied to, in that you just get a degree in whatever, and it necessarily amounts to job training. That's part of the solution, to recognize the lie. Does that make sense to you, Haley? That, that does make sense, Austin. It, it makes sense, but it's just that there's way, it's way more than that, you know? It's, it it's way, way more than that. Here's, here's another puzzle piece, if I may, here. Uh, we need to do manufacturing again in this country. You can look at the industrial age, as you call it, and say, well, that's over and done with. No, no, no. We need to make stuff and build stuff and sell stuff and export stuff from this country. And by and large, federal regulation and federal law, even federal environment law, prohibits us from manufacturing, using natural resources, mining, timber production, drilling oil out of the ground. These are all good things. They're very industrial in nature. There's a computer and digital and technological component to it, but we have to get back to making stuff and building stuff and exporting stuff in this country. That's another part of the puzzle piece, so to speak. Does that make sense for you, Haley? All of it does make sense. Okay. Well, listen, keep the faith. Please don't give up. I'm sorry for the predicament the millennials are in, uh, but keep listening to this program. Dr. Savage will be back tomorrow. Keep listening to him. You will be back. I'm sorry, you'll be back on Monday. You will be back here Monday, right, Haley? Yeah, I'll be back. Okay. Listen, thanks for the call. I, I appreciate the conversation. There is a way out, there are solutions. But it's going to require some very, very different thinking and some critical thinking at that. 855-400-7282, that's our number. 855-400-SAVAGE. It's the Savage Nation. Dr. Michael Savage is out. I'm Austin Hill sitting in. Don't go anywhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Great to have you part of the Savage Nation. The program rolls on. Dr. Michael Savage is off today. He returns on Monday. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Thank you, Dr. Savage, for having me uh, in to occupy the big chair here for just a few hours today in uh, his absence. Here's our number. It's 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Into the next hour. Don't go anywhere. This is big stuff, and I, I will get back to uh, your calls. Uh, listen, the, the degradation... The, just the slow erosion, and sometimes it's not so slow. It's certainly picking up the pace. The erosion of what started off as a wonderful, blessed uh, relationship, a relationship among allies, the United States and Israel. This is something that is near and dear to my heart as a Christian Gentile. I don't care what your uh, ethnic heritage is or your religious affiliation is. This should matter to all Americans. Every president of the United States, beginning with President Dwight Eisenhower, right up and through the previous president, George W. Bush. Every U.S. president, Republican or Democrat, saw fit to stand by Israel and ally our nation with Israel. Some would even say that the president that preceded Dwight Eisenhower, and I, I single him out because na Israel officially became a nation during the Eisenhower presidency, but some would say that even before President Eisenhower occupied the White House, President Harry Truman, in anticipation of the forming of the new nation of Israel way back when, even President Truman said, that's our ally in the Middle East. Suffice it to say that every president since the inception of Israel, right up and through our previous president, George W. Bush, stood by Israel. Barack Hussein Obama knew better. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to do it the way all those uh, past presidents did it. No, no. Barack Obama was going to bring us peace and tolerance and inclusive inclusivity and accomplish those things by undermining Israel, right? 
We'll talk more about that in economic news. Coming up, it's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Dr. Savage is off today. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Honored to be sitting in for him today. It's the Savage Nation. Take down our number. It's 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. We welcome your calls and we'll get back to them in moments here on the Savage Nation. Make sure to navigate over to michaelsavage.com, by the way. I, we've got so much news uh, published there. Uh, Dr. Savage and company, keep that. Uh, uh, keep the news flowing there. And and there is so much big, big, big stuff that has transpired, especially, and we're, we're going to get back onto this here in just a moment here, especially as it pertains to U.S. Israel relationships. I'm telling you, I, you know, I get so frustrated as a Gentile Christian guy being bashed on by liberal Jews in America. I, I, I was recalling as I was uh, reading some of the things that Dr. Savage has written about this subject and looking at some of the news today and, and even hearing some of the comments from our own president. I'll play some more audio of his press conference today. It's recalling a, an episode in my own life from just a couple of years ago where my wife and I, the I don't want to say the token Gentiles, just good friends of a Jewish family. We were uh, at maybe two of three or four non-Jews at a bar mitzvah. And yeah, you know, we didn't understand the food and the you know the celebration and the culture and the prayers and the poems and all that kind of stuff. We were just taking it in and fascinated with it. And as a Christian myself, I certainly have a spiritual connection, if nothing else, to Jews and to Judaism. Hello. Uh, but be that as it may, I, you know, over the dinner at this bar mitzvah, I have this uh, this uh, very liberal family member of the family, extended family of the family that I was there to celebrate with. And she goes off on this tangent and explains to me that the only reason you Gentile Christian types care about Israel is because Israel fulfills your theology. And I looked at her and I said, and that's a problem because Why? That's bad for Israel because why, by the way, that's not why I care about Israel, not exclusively why I care about Israel. Israel is the only stable nation with a human rights record in that whole region of the world called the Middle East. Anybody who cares about prosperity and peace and humanity itself should care about Israel. Then, secondary to that, there's the theological and historical and spiritual connection. But I, I have been told that so many times. Oh, you just care because you, you're a Bible thumper. And that's a problem because why? If I stand up for what is right and what's good and the, uh, the right to the, uh, the blessed nation of Israel to protect itself, that's a problem because, hmm, huh? Anyway, we've got this news at uh, michaelsavage.com. Navigate over to there sooner rather than later. The, uh, the Palestinians... Uh, those thugs, they have now torch-bombed a uh, historical site from the uh, biblical character, the biblical hero, from the what we would call as Christians the Old Testament of the Bible, from the Jewish ancient uh, sacred text, the character Joseph. You know, the, uh, Joseph and the coat of many colors, that guy. <clears throat> Yeah, peace, tolerance, and inclusiveness and diversity. That's what it's all about, right? President Barack Obama, and uh, Robert, if we could have the second soundbite of his uh, press conference today. Dear Leader Barack Hussein Obama was addressing this issue today, and uh, you know, kind of started off saying, well, okay, Israel has a right to protect itself, and, you know, we wouldn't want anybody to get hurt and okay so the government of israel kind of has this obligation i guess to stand by its people but then he just couldn't help himself could not rein himself in he had to make the palestinians and the israelis out to be the moral equivalent of one another and it's both of their faults and it's nobody's fault and it's everybody's fault all at the same time and shame on you israel for 
policing your community, protecting your people, and doing a real good job of it. Shame on you, Israel. Here's part two. President Obama at the White House earlier today. We also believe that it's important for both Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israeli elected officials 